Hey, today I'm going to show you a very cool way that you can record and stream audio from Cubase or any other DAW into OBS and also StreamYard OBS with the use of only one plugin. Hey, what's going on? Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we jump in, I just want to let you know that you can follow my free workshop on how to build the perfect mix template. The link is down below. Okay, so now let's talk about OBS and how we can stream and record audio from a DAW like Cubase into OBS and also StreamYard OBS. Okay, so now I'm using only one plugin this time around. I'm saying this time around because I already made a video on this topic a year ago. I'm going to leave the link on top and below if you want to watch watch it. Uh, this is a video where I share different ways you can uh, you can stream and record audio uh, from your DAW to uh, to OBS. But this time around, I'm going to use a plugin. And I actually got this tip from the YouTube channel Pound Sound. So shout out to you, my friend. Thank you very much because I've been using this method since then. Okay, so that's why I want to make a video and share that with you because it's a very cool one. So go and visit his YouTube channel and give him some love. I'm going to leave the link below. Okay, so now what you need to download is a plugin called Restream, and this is made by Reaper. Reaper is a well-known DAW, and you have access to download a bunch of their plugins uh, for free, like 100% free. And this Restream plugin is part of that package. Okay, so I'm on the reaper.fm website, and uh, uh, I'm actually, again, I'm going to leave that link down below so you can go and download that full package. So you need to download all the plugins, basically, but you don't need to install them all, you know. So if you want to, if you want to do so, feel free to do so, uh, but you don't have to. Once the plugin is installed, you go straight on Cubase or your DAW and you load that one up on the channel where you want to stream the audio from. Okay, so in my case, um, uh, when I record like tutorial videos like this one, I use OBS to screen capture my computer screen and also to record the music out of Cubase and also, um, you know, my microphone, you know, the audio coming from my microphone. So this one is plugged into my interface that goes into OBS. Uh, so let me show you how I do so. So in Cubase, uh, uh, I have the control room. This is what I work with a lot for reference plugins and this is the perfect way to insert Restream. And this is what I did right here. So Restream is inserted straight on the, um, um, the control room you know, in the insert part of the control room because I want to stream the full audio. Most of the time, this is what I do. I stream the full audio that comes out of Cubase. Uh, and something that I do here is I make sure that I insert that plugin just before plugins like SonarWorks and uh, Immersive Virtual Studio, you know, which is going to alter the sound. Uh, those are only monitoring plugins for my speakers and headphones. So I make sure that I uh, insert the, the Restream plugin before those plugins. So this way, what the, the signal that I'm going to stream over to OBS is going to be a clean signal. Uh, so if you don't have the pro version of Cubase, that means you don't have the control room. So what you can do, if you want to do the same as I do, you can just insert Restream straight on the stereo output of your project. And that's it. You know, so this is uh, what you need to do. So that simple. Okay, it's going to do the same job. All right, so now let me just remove this one and uh, let's open Restream. So this is what I get. Um, as you can tell, um, the size is a bit small, so I'm just going to zoom in. Um, now it's small because I'm using, on Cubase, I'm using the high DPI um, um, you know, resolution. So that's why some of the plugins are a bit smaller. You can actually resize plugins in Cubase, but I'm not going to do so for this one. Reason is it's not like a 100% stable plugin. It's been out for a while. Um, and I'm not even sure when the last update was done. It's an older plugin, but if you're using a high DPI and you want to just resize this one, uh, it's not going to work. You know, on my side, it doesn't anyways. It crashes Cubase. So just so you know, um, it's not like a 100% um, stable plugin. However, it does work pretty well. So far, so good on my side anyways. So if you decide to install it or if you already work with this plugin, leave me a comment down below. And I want to know uh, if if you got any issues so far. On my end, this is the issue that I get, but otherwise it works very well. Um, so what I do on my side, okay, once you have the plugin open, 
Uh, you make sure it's enabled. You make sure like the ad identifier is enabled, okay? And uh, you click on send audio MIDI because this is what you need to do. You need to send the audio out of, uh, of Cubase uh, by selecting send audio MIDI IP. Then I'm going to select local broadcast. That's the only thing I'm going to do. You can also add an IP address if you want to, but by selecting local broadcast, that works very well. And what I'm going to do next is jump on OBS. Okay, now I'm on OBS, and uh, as you can tell, I am recording this session uh, with uh, this version of OBS, and I have my Chris microphone right here that is actually recording at the moment, and I also have the Cubase audio. Um, the way I created that audio track on OBS is a very simple. You click on the plus sign, and you just insert audio input capture, and then you create a new source, name that source, and you're good to go. I already did that, and I named my source Cubase, and this is what I have here. So what I'm first going to do is to click on the settings icon, go to properties, and from this point, just select an unused audio device. Okay, so I'm going to select voice meter, which I don't use at the moment. I'm going to click on OK, and then I'm going to click again. I'm going to go back to the settings and go down to filters. And under filters, okay, let me remove that so I can show you how to do this. You're going to click on the plus sign and you're going to go down. You're going to have like a bunch of uh, plugins that are plugins from uh, uh, processing plugins from OBS, but you're going to go down to VST2 plugins. Click on OK. And there you go. Now you're going to have the list of all the VST plugins you have on your system. Okay, let me go and look for Restream, which is, uh, there you go, it's right here. And I'm going to open the plugin interface. I'm going to keep the identifier name to default because it needs to be the same name as the one you have on the Cubase side. So very, very important. So if you name the identifier Cubase on the Cubase side, you're going to need to name it Cubase here on the OBS side. So I left it at default, you know, way more simple this way. So this one I don't need to write down an identifier name. So I'm going to leave that at default. Uh, so it is the same name. And then I'm just going to leave that to receive audio MIDI. If I click play on my Cubase side, there you go, I have some audio, okay, very simple. And let's do this again. You know, so that is quite cool. Super fast to set up and it does the job very well. And also you can do this with the StreamYard OBS. So let me open StreamYard OBS, which is a, another version of OBS. And same thing, I have the similar setup where um, I have my, um, my input audio named Cubase. And again, I'm gonna click on the settings icon. And again, on the device, I'm gonna select a non-used audio device, like voice meter in my case. Um, that can be anything on your end. Uh, then I'm gonna go up to filters and same thing, you know, let me just remove this one one more time. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click on plus. I'm gonna have the filter types, all the available filters like we have on the OBS side. It's, you know, basically the same thing. I'm gonna click on done and look for restream. And there you go. I'm gonna open the plugin. And same thing, I'm gonna keep that to default since that is the name that I have on the Cubase side as the identifier, very important. And that's it. works very well. So now I just want to talk about the stability of the plugin because I've read some YouTube comments on uh, on the stability of Restream with Cubase and other DAWs. Um, now some people seems to have some stability issues working with this plugin. Now on my end, I've been working with this plugin for almost a year now. Um, and it works very well as far as I'm concerned, apart from the resize issue that I ran into uh, with high DPI in Cubase. Uh, and also, I think a couple of times when I first upgraded to Cubase 11, uh, you know, the first few weeks I had some, you know, I had some stability issues with the plugin, but it actually resolved by itself for an unknown reason, and it's been working since then. So, um, like for me, for my experience, it's a great plugin, great tool that I use all the time, every time that I record a YouTube video and also when I do some, some live streaming for my students. All right, so that's gonna be it for today. Subscribe if you're new here on the channel, leave your comments, your questions, share and like if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care and see you.